Right, have a look down there to me. So the leak is sort of like happening between where the head joins the block, around this sort of area. And you can see that there's not a lot of sealant on there. All right. It's just, yeah, it's not been done properly, is it? And if we then move on over to the bench, Timmy, we've got the timing cover to hand. There we are, before we talk about that. So that's all the, what are we going to call that to me today? Organizer. That's it, yeah. Cylinder head, stripped down organizer, yeah? That's correct. So you've got these hams, valve springs, valves, that. carbonated up there. Not horrendous, but the thing is, this is having full auxiliary methanol fits. So the route we're going to go is, we don't want to be leaving that on there because although the meth will help clean that up, it's not going to clean it up, you know, put it back to squeaky clean. Exhaust valves, a different matter. You know, if you think about it, on the, with a flood auxiliary methanol, we clean these up, well, they'll all be cleaned up, but the inlet valve's back to look new. And then you've got, because they're spraying directly onto them. So that's why they'll be kept nice and clean. Right? Only when the meth's active. You got them, if you're under the, the threshold where the meth starts to trigger, then it's not going to be spraying, is it? But more of the time, you'll be on the meth, and that's why it cleans the valves because it's spraying in there, isn't it? So we get them nice and clean in the first place, and then we'll. Uh, uh, but if you to that side, timing cover up. Obviously, the main seal. They probably changed the seal when they had the recall. Maybe who knows? It's a dealer. It's the unknown. So we'll be changing that anyway. You can see that where the sealer is not. So this is the area where it was leaking. So it was leaking, then running down, dripping down onto the, so you can imagine. See the right way around there, sweet, sweet. Yeah. Um, so you can imagine, so it's been leaking from there, look, and then running down and then dripping onto the feed pipe. Oh, it's leaving the feed pipe, it's not. All right. That'll be cleaned up it's a bit. Bit of mess where they put it lot and just look at it, but really, you know. But we'll put that right. I'm show it to you when it's all the cedars all on there, uh, as it should be, and then we'll go on to the next bit. So we've made progress. Valves are all uh, they've all been cleaned, lapped back in. That's all. That part is all done. Tom chain cover, which is where it was leaking. So if you remember, it would have been leaking around about here. We showed you the pictures and you have seen it all explained where the sealer was and where it wasn't. And not enough put on and blah, 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 and all that sort of stuff, yeah. But that's all clean, prepped, which is what they should have done at the dealer. Prepped that, prepped the block, prepped the part of the head where it makes contact, and then you should be fine. Not over the, you still got to apply the sealant in the correct way. Alright, so it should be applied around the inner part. Trace it all the way around, not around here, around the inner part of each hole. Well, all the way around, and then it's got to be bonded on within 10 minutes. What we do is we, and obviously, you've got to do the little bits here, and then you've got those little bits where the block joins the head. Little bits there. So, what we tend to do is to pop that on, do this one first, because that takes the longest. And then we do the little bits on the, bits required on the joints. And then really, really, it's a bit more difficult to do with it, with the engine in the car, because you gotta jack the engine up to a certain, so you can get the, because you don't want that, trying to put that cover down, and then it catches everywhere, and then starts, you know, messing around with the sealant, and the sealant gets all pushed everywhere. You don't want that, you wanna put it straight down, nice and clean, so like, you need two people to do that, and then pop it straight on, okay? Bolts, get the bolts straight in there. Once you've nipped them up, go around the correct torque setting, like it's 10 newton meters, I think, from memory on both those. But yeah, go around the sequence, done. Um, so that's that side of it. Now, as we said, because the inlet valves were carboned up and the heads off, we thought, right, okay, we're not going to forge it or anything. Um, but we thought, well, 
uh, give the customer the option to put a deck brace in it if he wants to. So that's your deck brace. It's just quite simple, really. And that's, they're not, don't forget, every, although they're all the same engine, the tolerance is going to be a bit different on the liners. So there might be a little bit of, uh, you know, modification to be done for that to sit in snug. You don't want it sitting in there mega tight, so you've got to hammer the thing in, right? It needs to be just snug, you know, so a little bit of gentle persuasion, but nice snug fit. Uh, first one we've done, to, I like it really to me, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's quite straightforward. Obviously, all your hose here is for the flow that needs to be. You'll find that when you, the gasket, will, those hoses will be in the same position as the head gasket. And then what we're going to use is the, I think we're going to just stick with the revised, uprated head gasket rather than put a, like a race spec Kometic one on it. I don't think it's necessary on this application. The standard OE gaskets, that one there is pretty good anyway. It's a multi layer steel. I think it's made by like Victor Rhines, but quality gasket anyway, not necessary on this application. Only when you're starting to wind the horsepower right up and then maybe think about it. ARP studs, which is makes sense to do that as well. Iridium cooler running plug, we'll gap them. 1660 mil, 26 thou, whichever you choose, whichever you're working on, whether you're working on period or metric. And the oil feed pipe. Now again, it's not leaking, this car has not been leaking from the oil feed pipe. But at the same time, I've got the part. So Robert said, can you put the oil pipe on it? Yeah, of course I will. So that's the fitting that goes into the top of the turbo. These are made for us by Julian down at Proform. And then there's, a, there's the feed pipe. Okay, we've well got choice of a doughty washer, which is like sort of one of used on a sump, or your normal copper washer. We use the doughty washer normally. No, no issues there. Seals up, lovely. So what we want to do now is we'll get the, we can start putting it all back together now. Um, obviously you see there in the camera, that's the that's the 040 edge in that cam which we need to lubricate things when we're putting the tappets back in. And then cams are going, we've got the engine assembly lube that we use. We'll be generous with that as well, just so if it's almost about the first start off. It's not, Bales was a brand new build, so everything was like new and clean, whereas this has been running, it's not a new build is it? So. We don't have to worry too. We don't have to worry about the running inside of it. We just, as long as we get it all lubed up, fire it up, get it running for. You know, well, it's not necessary to, you know, start bedding the rings in and all that sort of stuff. Hold it up on revs. Not necessary. They've already been done. It's just we're not interviewing the bottom half at all. All right. So that's it. Just that that part there. We'll now crack on and start putting it back together. And then we'll, there's lots to do on this, as we've already spoke. And then we got all the methanol print on it and the sport cat and load one on it the cooler we'll show you that when we stencil that we'll put it on we've got to test fit that first you can't just i sort of let me know where the stencil goes but every car again is different so just to be sure what we'll do is we'll dummy fit the intercooler we we'll sort of like pop the stencil on where we think it is just hold on with low tack tape and then we'll pop the bumper on yeah that looks right that's where it goes take it off in we'll use 2k paint on it in the, except in the blue same as what phil's got effectively so we'll just um, be copying that so Three coats of X primer, and then we'll put three coats of 2K on it, and it's not gonna, you know, it's gonna be resistant for it chipping off. Then oil could we got to fit as well, but we'll share all that with you. So we're gonna be full on on this one. Quick switch in back on the bonnet, yeah. Yep. You got it, Timmy. Right. Deck braces in. Tricky little things to fit these, isn't they, Timmy? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not just a case of it's close, isn't it? Very. It's not like, well, it's not plug and play, is it? A little mod modification, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not even got a plug and play in here, so it can't be plug and play, can it? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Comments down below. What do, you, what do you think we can call it? It's not plug and play, it's got to be something else, isn't it? You get something and it's got a slot in there, and I don't know, I can't be bothered to come up with something, so I'll leave the viewers to comment on that one. But yeah, we had to do some uh, slight modifications. Now, with these, what you don't want to be doing is, is um, getting the old big hammer out and uh, forcing the thing in. It is a interference fit, but to a certain extent, right? You don't need to. So all we do is, um, you know, it's snug, yeah, hmm. not super tight. So the way we've done it is, we've trimmed it a bit just to make that it is snug because it wasn't before. It was a bit tight to me, wasn't it? Yeah. I thought, mm, no, that's not. I'm not happy with that. 
So we want to get it like sort of like level. You can have it a little bit raised if you want. Because when you put that, pull the head gasket, uh, the head down, it's going to like level it anyway, isn't it? But you don't want it too far down. It needs to be slightly proud or level. And for a straight edge across that, that's fine. We've done it like that. Um, and your little waterways here, look. So that, if you put the head gasket on there, they'll pretty much line up with that. We'll demonstrate that in a sec. But all I've done is just give the pistons a quick little wipe off. Don't want to go going too mad with the pistons and cleaning them up like no, it's not necessary, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, a little bit of um, re-engineering to do on that deck brace. And then we just tapped it in with a nylon mallet, very gingerly, yeah? Yep. If I may use that term. Are you okay with that one? I am, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, that's it really. So we're just about, that's ready now to, uh, all the front is all super clean down here. Yeah. I'm going to be showed that on the... I think we did. Did we? Yeah, so that's all super clean. I've cleaned all that up. The head's all cleaned up. And we're pretty much ready to rock and roll the head. We've now got the super clean prepared timing cover. Like I said, previous, this is what Forge has done. Now we're going to use, I've opted, I don't know, think about this, I'm not going to put a chromatic multi-layer steel, this is multi-layer steel gasket anyway, but I was going to, two miles where we would put the chromatic one on it. Like Phil runs on his two litre one. But I thought, no, the reason being is, well, it's not really necessary. I mean, these are really good gaskets. The standard upright gasket, quality gasket. There's no real need. I mean, like my car, is stock, mine don't run a upright gasket. When I, whatever I'm gonna do with a two litre block like Phil's, then yes, it's a bit different then, isn't it? Depends on what power you're gonna run and all this sort of stuff. But these are really, really good. You ain't gotta worry about it for the sort of thing we're doing. So we'll stick with that. Obviously, we're gonna ALP stud it. Makes sense. Then what you find then is, on number three with that, it'll go, it'll wind all the way down. So this part will go right down and bottom out. Hence why you'll get better clamping force and it'll pull the head right down rather than bolts. It'll go so far, the bolt will down to the thread and you'll have a gap underneath it like that. So it's not actually using all the thread to pull it down and uh, clampy clamp, yeah? That's right. Not blankety blank, clampy clamp. You remember blankety blank, would you? No. No, way before your time. Anyway, some of the viewers will. All right. So yeah, the you know, usual thing that goes with it, just the uh, you know, lube and all that nonsense. Heads done, all the valves room set about that before, it's all been prepped. That's pretty much ready to go back on the cams and the tappets and all that sort of stuff. There. Very important. Yeah. Always follow the uh, instructions from ARP because it's not, if you follow the instructions for torque settings for factory bolts, Completely different, so you need to follow these. Nice. That's the that's about it, really. Got the 0 40 all ready to go, so we can we put all the tappets back in and loop up. We'd have the assembly loop as well. Feed pipe, let's mention that one. So, the I've put the bit, you don't know if you've seen that, no, you didn't see it. So, the bit for the turbo, I've already put that, put that in there, that's all screwed in, and the bit that goes into the block, we've already done that as well. Must okay. be in the block, can't be in the head to me, the head's on the bench here. That's right. Before you ask, yeah, it is in the block feed. So that, like that, the back of the block, it's up around the turbo, it sits on the turbo, yeah. Much better idea than that uh, the standard OE one. But, hey look, that wasn't leaking, that's not where the leak was coming from. But he wants me to, Robert wants me to put that on anyway, so we'll gladly oblige. All right. So yeah, let's, uh, let's crack on. Hey, you know the old clampy clamp, don't you? No. No? Clampy no. clamp? Blankety blank? No. Wait before you tell me that. Clampy clamp, clampy clamp, do do, clampy clamp, clampy clamp, do do. Hey? Oh, right, yeah. You think I'm crazy, isn't you? Yeah. Hey, you want to see crazy? I'll show you crazy. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs>